So, folks, my goodness, he keeps on stepping into it. And, of course, before I even say the name, you're like, oh, yeah, that's old Donnie. Because this is what this man does. He not only gets himself into trouble through a whole bunch of means, but usually with his big fat mouth. But then once he's in trouble, he magnifies the trouble with, you guessed it, his big fat mouth. And that's exactly what's happened in the Gene Carroll trial, which is wrapping up tomorrow. Pretty much every observer is expecting Carroll to win. The real question is going to be, you know, what does the jury award her? Because there's a big variance here. In a civil case, they could give her anything from like a token $1 win to anything absolutely massive. But what's critical is that Donald Trump blew up any defense he had with that awful def deposition that we covered yesterday that more and more experts are leaning into. But one thing few people are talking about is how a new lawsuit has just opened up. And it's based entirely on how Donald Trump has been acting, not in the past, but just since this trial has gone on. He has defamed Gene Carroll, not only in the past, but during this trial as well. And that's going to cost him millions too. Has given Trump until 5 p.m. tomorrow to decide whether he will testify with closing arguments set to begin on Monday. The writer has accused Trump of sexually assaulting her in a department store dressing room in the 1990s. On Friday, video of Trump's October deposition was released. Not only did he repeatedly deny the allegations, but he also defended his comments in the infamous Access Hollywood tape. Listen to this. In this video, I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. Just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Grab them by the You can do anything. That's what you said, correct? Well, historically, that's true with stars. It's true with stars that, that they can grab women by the Well, that's what it's... If you look over the last million years, I guess that's been largely true. Not always, but largely true. Unfortunately or fortunately. And you consider yourself uh, to be a star? I think you can say that, yeah. Joining me now, Barbara McQuaid. MSNBC legal analyst, former U.S. attorney in Michigan, and law professor at the University of Michigan Law School. Barbara, thank you very much for being here. Just, I, I'm, I'm sorry, this is only the second time I have heard that soundbite from Trump's deposition. How damaging was that, or is that? I think it's devastating to his case. He affirms the sentiments that he made in that recording. There are a thousand ways you can deflect that recording. You can say uh, it was uh, an offensive and ill-advised joke. You could say we were just puffing, it was just locker room talk, you know, all of these kinds of things. But not only did he repeat it, he defended it and said, yes, he's the kind of person uh, who is entitled to this sort of behavior. So uh, I think it's, it's, it's uh, devastating and damaging. Uh, and, and it appears to be a rare moment of candor for Donald Trump. But I think it certainly supports the claims of E. Jean Carroll. You know, the defense didn't present any witnesses, but now the judge has allowed Trump this window to testify, given his comments in Scotland a few days ago. Would you advise him to testify? And do you think he will testify? No and no. Um, I think that, uh, you know, Trump may have, uh, you know, just as he said he wanted to talk with Robert Mueller, he couldn't wait, but right. these lawyers, you know, are making it difficult. Uh, I think he wants to create the appearance of wanting to tell his side of the story, but I don't think he will. One, I, I think if you're his lawyer, it's akin to legal malpractice to put him on the stand. He is so incapable of telling the truth and answering questions, and as we just heard, uh, answering them in ways that might be helpful to his case. I think the other is he's just made a strategic decision here. Uh, he'd rather lose this case than expose himself for all of his misconduct. And if he takes the stand, it opens him up to all kinds of cross-examination about mm. his uh, propensity for untruthfulness. And so you could cross-examine about every lie he's ever made. I don't think we have the time uh, from now to, to kingdom come to go through all of that. So I think he'd rather take his lumps, pay the, whatever is the judgment here, and then forever proclaim that this was a show trial and it was unfair and how much the judge and the jury were out to get him. I think strategically long-term, he probably assesses that that's in his best interest. Marla Maples, Ivana, and a woman he says 
He didn't know her at all, and yet he points to E.G. and Carol. Let me put the picture up again and says, oh, yeah, 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 that, yeah that's, that's Marla. And it wasn't. What does that say about him? That and the fact that he couldn't remember what year he was married to Ivana, what year he was married to Marla, and wouldn't even ask about, uh, answer about when he was married to his current wife, Melania. Uh, to Donald, all women look alike. It's as simple as that. Uh, they're not human beings. Donald sees all the rest of us as objects. And he's been this way. I've known him for 35 years. Uh, he's been that way from the beginning. And he's very strategic about people he thinks can help or hurt him as a general rule. But, you know, uh, none of us are human beings to him. We're objects to be used. And I'm not the least bit surprised that he could look at a very clearly focused picture of E. Jean Carroll and say, that's Marla. And, and yeah. of course, by the way, E. Jean Carroll, not at 79, but at the time this happened when she was in her early 50s, absolutely his type. So this is just how Donald operates. Donald's mind is a very simple point to it, Joy. If he says it, that makes it so. He creates his own reality. And if you don't buy it, well, fake news. She's not my type. And yet here we have him mistaking a picture of E. Jean Carroll with his ex-wife, Marla Maples, who obviously is his type. Yeah, it's a huge blunder on his part. I mean, listen, of course, as you mentioned before, Jake, rape is not really about sexual attraction, it's about power and domination and control. But even assuming for a second that's his defense, you know, it, it, you might expect his defense to be, of course, I didn't do it. But secondarily, you might expect someone in the scenario to say, not she's not my type, but instead something along the lines of, I would never do this. My character is too good. Let me bring forward dozens of witnesses to tell you about how this is not the sort of thing I would ever do. He can't do that here. Why? Because that is not his character. He couldn't find any witnesses to say that. And in fact, quite the opposite, there would be then dozens of witnesses on the other side to testify to the contrary. So he's left with this ridiculous defense of, gee, I don't really find her attractive. And now that's not even really available to him either because he's mucked it up with this photo. And, and Renata, the, the, the jury did hear from um, E. Jean Carroll and another woman who accused him of sexual assault. Uh, Trump's lawyers presented no witnesses of their own. What, what, what do you make of this strategy? Well, you can see why, right, Jake, after watching some of these clips, why they might not want him on the stand. But it comes at a very serious risk. You know, Jennifer just mentioned a moment ago, and I think she's right, that the, the defense you'd expect from a defendant here would be, of, they, I would never do this. This is awful. I'm just so outraged and, and, and concerned that I am being accused of committing a very serious violent crime. Um, but instead, I think by you know, not only is he not appearing to testify in person, which means the jury's really never going to have any sort of emotional connection there with him, but you know, and, and be able to really assess that. But he's not there during the proceedings, and really, I think is giving the jury the impression that he's not taking this seriously. And so, if they, unless they totally disbelieve everything Carol has said and the other witnesses. I think that really Trump and his team are putting them in a, themselves in a position to lose this case. All right, let me get back to one of the most shocking quotes uh, from, from his deposition. Trump is heard on the Access Hollywood tape back from 2005, 2006, bragging about how if you're a star, you can grab women by their genitals, whether they want it or not. Uh, during the deposition, he was asked about it. He said that stars can do that. Uh, and then he says, unfortunately... Or fortunately, or fortunately, I mean, doesn't that lend credence to the idea that he thinks that sometimes it's a good thing that stars can get away with grabbing women uh, by their genitals, uh, whether they want them or not? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I don't know. How sorry, Jennifer, know. Jennifer, if you could do that. Sorry, Jennifer. Yeah, this, I mean, this is another missed opportunity for him. If I'm Trump's lawyer, I'm telling him to keep going with this you know, uh, locker room defense. It was just talk. I really don't mean it. That's a terrible thing. Instead, he doubles down and says, yeah, sure, stars can do whatever they want, you know, for a million years now. So, you know, he is a, a terrible witness. That's why we'll never see him on the stand voluntarily. Deposition where I think he really damns himself. Uh, he says that when E. Jean Carroll went on Anderson Cooper on the other network, CNN, that he described uh, what happened between them as sexy. 
Well, no. What she said was people think rape is sexy. It's not. It's awful and it's violent. But what better indication of how Donald turns any word he can to turn truth on its head? And he, he's done this his whole life. I mean, this is a man whose casinos plied sixth, seventh and eighth graders who had money with liquor and limousines and hotel rooms. There, There is no moral core here in this man. And the, the the case putting him on the witness stand, that would be a worse nightmare than Tacopina made clear to Judge Kaplan simply being Trump's lawyer has to be. <laughs> let, let just stay with you just for a second, because it's not just that. So now we now know that there's one, you know, to move on to one of his other many cases in the Mar-a-Lago documents case, he's now got a former staffer testifying or, you know, cooperating. How How nervous do you think he might be about that, about hiding documents? Oh, Donald's going to be very worried about that. And worse for Donald, he's going to run into something called criminal, criminal procedure rule 43, which grows out of an 1892 Supreme Court case. He was able to skip the E. Jean Carroll trial because it's civil. When you're tried criminally in any court in this country, you must be there for every single second of the proceedings. And he may well find he has to campaign for president <laughs> sitting at the defense table in one of several trials next year. So you can see everyone notes like this is awful for Trump. He looks awful. He sounds awful. It's not only what he's saying. He, guys, he looks more like a smug a-hole than usual. Like, doesn't he? Right? Like, you see him at his rallies and you see the way he walks and talks like he's better than everybody. But that's one thing. Here, it's even worse. Like, that line where he's like, oh, stars can get away with it, fortunately or unfortunately. Like, just vile stuff, guys. But the way he says it, and he's like, oh, do you think of yourself as a star? He's like, the way he answers is like, it's the smuggest I've ever seen Donald Trump. It's like, you know, the fastest I've ever seen Usain Bolt or something, right? You know what I mean? Like, for him to be smugger than usual, it's really bad. But it's also how he's been acting. And this has opened him up to a lawsuit, 20, 30, 40, 50 million, however, again, because he continues to defame Gene Carroll and the judge and Gene Carroll's lawyer and all the rest with how he's been acting. Because not only has he been risking contempt perjury, all of those sorts of obstruction charges by how he's acted during the trial, what he's been saying about Carol yet again, that she's a liar, it's a witch hunt, it's a scam, she's basically uh, trying to defraud me, uh, you know, not being said as arguments in the court, we should be clear, because when you're in a courtroom, you have leeway about what you can say and argue, but way he's been acting outside the courtroom has defamed Carol again. So this isn't over. It might not even be over tomorrow. She could come back and hit him again, and I hope she does.